So in today's video, we're talking about lockups and what happens if you install a new Linux desktop and all of a sudden you're, you're jamming along on a live stream and it just decides to lock up or you're gaming and it just decides to lock up after your live stream. I speak from experience. Obviously, I'm referencing Monday's live stream video where I went through the entire thing. It locked up one time during this live stream and I didn't think anything of it and rebooted and just finished out the live stream. But... As I tinkered around more on my PC, I was getting lock ops fairly often, and I figured out there's a problem in this system, and there's a problem with my fresh Manjaro installation, and I need to fix it. So that's what we're going to do in this video. This video is brought to you by Pluralsight. It's an online video service I've used to learn a whole host of complex issues when it comes to like Windows Server, Citrix Online. I've actually used those videos to learn these skills and it's one service I highly recommend and one that's really not accurately represented on YouTube and why I've sought them out to offer it to you guys. So if you're interested in that, click the link in the description below. All right, so your system is locking up and you are having issues with it. What exactly is going on here is the first problem you have. Now, if it's consistently doing it once a day or a couple times a day, then you probably have a hardware incompatibility or um, something with a new kernel is, is having an issue. This is very common on Arch-based systems. So if you have vanilla Arch or you're on Manjaro or these types of things, they typically run a lot newer kernels than your Debian counterparts like Ubuntu, Linux Mint, Pop! OS. All those use older kernels. So that's why when you jump into an Arch-based system, you've got to watch out for this. So it's happened to me, it's happening to me, and today we're gonna go ahead and fix this. So let's jump over on the desktop and I'm gonna go ahead and break down the fixes I've used to repair my Manjaro or make it a lot more stable than it is right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and switch out our kernel. So the kernel is the first thing I do on pretty much any install. Even if you're not having problems, checking out and getting a secondary kernel installed is probably a top priority for me. Uh, that and time shift backups, making sure you have proper backups on Arch is also mandatory. So with that, we'll go into system settings. And from system settings, we're going to go over to kernel. Now I went ahead and installed 5.1.21 and that is what it's running on. Um, there's a couple little caveats to this as far as this goes. Now I'm probably going to go ahead and remove 5.2.11 because this caused me all kinds of problems. So uh, we're going to go ahead and remove this guy. And then I also recommend always having at least two kernels. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and get this LTS recommended kernel right here, 4.19 subversion 69. It's a good number right there. So with that, let's go ahead and hit continue. And this will install this LTS kernel as well. Having an LTS kernel is just great for troubleshooting. Should something happen or this kernel get upgraded, I know I can always fall back into this other kernel, which is, is very important. Now, when you do this, I'm also going to pull up Grub Customizer because it's really important when it comes to Grub Customization that... Uh, by default, Manjaro just basically skips over Grub. There's no actual selection menu. So... Uh, it's important to make sure you, you install Grub Customizer, maybe even uh, pimp out your screen a little bit. If you have multiple dual booting uh, systems, I would definitely install Grub Customizer with a custom theme just because it's cool. But uh, at the very least, you can do this. And then if you had problems in 5.1, you can always fall back to 4.19 uh, just simply by uh, going into the Grub uh, rescue and then booting directly from this kernel. But having it installed here is, is mandatory in my opinion. So with this, I've already defaulted to 5.1.21, but I'm going to show that real fast using Grub Customizer. I like Grub Customizer because if it errors, it typically informs you of an error where if you're typing and manually editing it through a terminal, you can have some problems there where uh, this has like a revert feature. So if you mess up, you could revert back and it also has warnings and other things. So Grub Customizer is really, really nice, but you can see what all we're doing and you can click here and then 
just simply hit edit and you can see exactly what it's booting to, which is, is pretty, pretty awesome. So um, I'm going to go ahead and move this guy down. We're going to just move it down below that one. And then we're going to move this one down below it. I just like to organize these. And then also, you know, usually you'll have like a windows. Now my windows machine on my internal production machine, it, it does multiple partitions because I have a whole bunch of windows partitions and I like to go ahead and remove all those and only pick the pertinent one. That way the menu options are very sleek. Now I've done a whole video on grub customization. So if you want to do like uh, change the appearance and all that, definitely check out that video. I'll try and link it in the description as well. So with all that, um, the default entry goes to 5.1, show the menu, look for other operating systems. I'm going to uncheck this because I don't have, I'm not dual booting, so it doesn't need to do that. It makes, uh, when you rebuild Grub, it rebuilds a little bit faster. Boot default is five seconds. Uh, kernel perimeters, if you see quiet here, a lot of times it'll silence that uh, boot entry or the visibility of it. So uh, make sure these are checked and you don't have quiet down in the kernel parameters uh, because this will kind of make it not show at all for the options. I like to see it, um, but to each his own, some people do not. So with this, um, we'll go ahead and hit save. It'll go ahead and save our configuration and hit re refresh just to make sure everything refreshes okay. And that's pretty much it. So I just kind of want to flip through Grub customization uh, just because whenever you change the kernel around, I like to mess around with the priority. But just know, always be doing backups. On top of that, I would recommend using Time Shift. I always recommend Time Shift in almost all my videos just because it's super important uh, because things happen on your Linux install. You, you might do something silly. I know I'm going to do something silly and mess up my install. And that's why I always use time shift. And then if I ever need it, I can restore from either the GUI or I can boot directly into a TTY or a direct terminal and restore from there through command line. So either way is great. Just make sure do backups. No one ever said, Oh, I wish I had less backups. Uh, most people at the very end, always go, man, why didn't I back up? So back up your data. So there you have it. That is upgrading your kernel or at least uh, holding your kernel at a 5.1 from Manjaro. I highly recommend doing this if you run into issues. A lot of times when you're constantly upgrading to the latest and greatest, sometimes bugs can sneak in there and those bugs can usually lead to these lockups and things that I'm looking at and talking about. It's especially common uh, for you know, middle of the grade hardware or second or third gen hardware that's a little older. Now, if you're on the newest hardware, a lot of times you're on that bleeding edge just to try and get everything you can out of it. But I'm running a Ryzen 2700 with a AMD RX 580. And with those combinations, it just was not liking the 5.2 kernel, and that's why I dropped the 5.1. So far, 5.1 has been very good for me. If it continues to have problems, I'll probably downgrade it to the LTS kernel, which I think is 4.19 as of the shooting of this video, but definitely check in here for the LTS kernel. I recommend installing that LTS kernel anyways, so definitely do that. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below, and a big shout out to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one, and I'll see you in the next one.